What's up? It's your boy Carcino here. Want to give a shout out to all my fans on the YouTube page, the people that come by and make it happen and keep it cracking. You know, so I want to give y'all a shout out and do this prediction video before I leave and get out of here. Um, let's talk about the first fight on the Showtime card. We have a fight where Deontay Wilder is going to knock this guy out within the first five rounds. Okay, now moving along to the other cards. You have Peter Quillen versus uh, Gabriel Rosado. <coughs> Excuse me. Gay Rosado is more technically sound than Peter Quillen. Um, I believe as far as boxing skills, I think he's had a lot more rounds and been in a lot more tasted battles than uh, Peter has. They both have a similar story. Both guys really never really had a... Uh, full training camp coming up you know they mostly had a job and had the box and job and just taking fights on short notice but Peter Quillen was a little bit more protected than um, Gabriel Rosado so it's all a matter of who you know or who's invested in you or who's vested in you so um, and breaking down the fight though I think Peter's power is the difference maker here. Peter is a very big middleweight. And Gabriel Rosado is not a big middleweight at all. He's really a 154-pound junior middleweight fighter. And though he has technical skills, he, he seems to break up a lot from a lot of punches. And I think Gabriel can, can uh, get hurt if he's not careful. Because he keeps his chin up a little bit too much, a little Philly pride when he's throwing his punches and he don't want to get hit by a left hook from Peter Quillen you know that that could start to break your face up open up old wounds and and then time because Peter loads up on every shot in time he might start to wear and tear to where they, the referee might have to stop the fight on cuts and I don't see him going the distance with Peter Quillen I just can't I just don't see him holding up under all that power so that's how I see that fight going. Uh, the Menara Hopkins uh, Marat fight I see going a uh, different way. This is like a fight that I think is going to go to the cards, and I think Hopkins will win it because this guy fights in a style that Hopkins loves. He puts up the high guard, invites you to come in. He doesn't. He cuts off the ring, but he's not that active. He throws maybe two punches, then he likes to tie you up. I mean, against Cleverly, he was able to have some success when he gets on the inside. He got fast hands on the inside, but Bernard Hopkins is used to that. He's not going to do anything to Bernard. Um, he fights dirty, puts you in the headlock, throws an uppercut. You know, he will ride and take whatever you give him. But the thing is, he's not that active. And then here's a guy in Bernard Hopkins who can walk around the ring, take his time, pick you apart. He, it'll be a Bernard Hopkins show. Where it'd be a lot of ties up, tie up, and that's what Marat would like too. He he needs to jab, and that's something he doesn't do. If you don't jab, you're gonna have problems with Bernard Hopkins. It's just as simple as that. A jab negates a lot of things Bernard likes to do. He hates a jab in his face, like most people do, and that keeps him off center, off balance. He can't walk around and parade. And Chad Dawson kept a jab out on him, whereas Marat does not. So. That's the difference between the fight. Uh, Bernard Hopkins will win unanimous decision, and they go from there. And uh, someone told me about uh, George Groves versus Carl Froch. I don't think Groves is seasoned enough to deal with Carl Froch. I think Carl Froch will just pick him apart, destroy him, just completely annihilate him on the inside. And on the outside, he won't be able to deal with. Froch's confidence. Froch will take that boy's confidence away from him. And that comes with experience. Knowing how to dictate and control around and things of that nature. I mean, Froch has a great beard and George Grove is a decent boxer, but he, he's, he's not ready mentally, I think, for this level. I think in late, late in fights, he breaks down a little bit. And Frosch just knows what to do. You know, it just gets to a point where you know what you're comfortable at, 
and you know how you can force a guy to fight your fight and do what you want to do and I see a lot of sneaky right hands from Frotch like really doing some damage there so for that guy who asked there you go there's your question asked and we'll do a question part later but I gotta get out of here peace